All right, so this got me thinking. Today is that blood moon. Yes, blood moon looks amazing today. And everyone's texting me, are you taking pictures of it? And I have this picture, which is in a picture frame. It's great. I've had it on my shelf for a while. And the reason I like this picture is because it's taken at a partial phase. Now, what does that mean? That means that the moon is lit just about 50%. And that gives you these nice craters right along the edge. You can't achieve that effect when you have a full moon because there's not enough contrast on the edge. But here, look at this. Right along the edge where the sunlight and the shadow meet, you have this amazing, incredible detail. And this is shot with a 400 millimeter lens on a Nikon D610. Now, what you have to keep in mind also is this light that's hitting the moon, when it's in full phase, it's flat. So shooting the moon when it's a full moon is actually, it's all right, you can get some detail out. But really, it's when the shadow rolls across the surface that you get these incredible, incredible levels of detail. And the D610 is only a 24 megapixel shot. And this is a 4x6 picture that I printed up. Now there's one other thing I was thinking about. Everyone's saying, hey, the moon is red. So I have a plate and I have a dry erase marker. So what we've got is we've got the moon here, we've got the earth here, and we've got the sun here. Now, sunlight on an eclipse will either be completely blocked, causing the moon to become invisible, or in other cases, the sunlight will hit the atmosphere of Earth, giving the moon that blood red glow. So, of course, this is not to scale. This is our Earth, this is our moon, and this is our sun. So what will happen is the sunlight will head towards the Earth. Earth won't block all of it and some of it will pass through the edges of Earth's atmosphere and cast the color red onto the moon, making it red instead of the regular yellow-white. Now, why does it turn red? Well, that's because Earth's atmosphere contains various molecules which absorb certain colors. That's why our sky is blue, because that's the color that's absorbed. Now, what does that mean? That means the moon gets only the red frequency from sun's light. Now, if we look at the sun, it's kind of, you know, I guess we could also, it's kind of yellowish white, I guess, right? Looking through our atmosphere. The sun is pretty much a, uh, a white dwarf star. That's the spectrum and the color of light that it sends out. And that's why the moon looks kind of yellowish white, depending on, you know, your ability to perceive colors. Now, imagine if, you had a light source that had, let's, let's break this down to like, say, you know, there's your um, red, your green, and your blue. You know, there's some, some primary colors, right? RGB, just like on a computer screen. And, you know, they emit together, or CMYK. But, anyhow, so here's your three colors. And all of a sudden, what happens is you illuminate the blue and the green. That means only the colors in the red color spectrum will actually get to the moon. Now, if you want a proper picture, do you want a picture with all colors being properly sent through or just a partial color? If I want to light something up, I want as much light as possible getting to my source. So here actually what's happening is you're not getting a perfect light. First off, when shooting a full moon, you're going to get a flat surface just like we have here with no detail. What you want is never to shoot a full moon. You want to get all these crater and edge details. But the other thing is you want as much of the light spectrum to get to the moon. You don't want a bunch of the light to be absorbed by Earth's atmosphere and only partial light getting to the moon because that decreases your full quality of what your camera can perceive. Not only that, most cameras usually will struggle with red. So if you go and take a picture of a bright red rose, you'll see that Cameras don't really like red, and there's a reason for that, and that's how the sensors are usually configured. And you can pull shadows, but you know, if you're playing with an image, try, try to take a picture of something red, and you'll see that you lose a lot of detail in red. So taking a picture of a moon on a blood moon day is actually one of the worst things you can do to get a good shot of the moon. You might as well wait for a day when you are almost at a full moon and get all of the sun's spectrum all the frequencies of light to get to the moon, giving you the best possible picture. Well, that's just my two cents. 
hopefully you've got some amazing pictures. Please share them and, uh, you know, tag me at galleryassess.photo if you're on Instagram or at galleryassess on Twitter and let me see what's happening with your shots. But uh, for now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to enjoy my Sunday night and I'm going to look at this awesome picture of a moon that I've already taken.